Alrighty, oh well. Welcome everybody to Let's Talk Racing. Tonight we got Jerry Rosser and Al Pierce over here on the side. Of course myself, Roger Brain. How you doing tonight, Al? Want you to cut the lights on? Well, you don't have a hat on, so I don't want it to be all blurry or something. I can you know? put one on. But actually the auto light on it okay. works pretty good. I got a haircut today, by the way. Which one? I got them all cut. <laughs> okay. Look different. Looks like Curtis Strange. It actually looks pretty good on you. Of course, we always see in a hat anyway. You're just trying to get on my good side because you know I'm going to make you buy me dinner. I always do. What are you worried about? I, I even have coupons all the time nowadays. I know it. I know it. How was the charity ride? Tell us about that. Well, except for in no particular order, right? Except for rain, sleet, snow, high wind, dust, fog, blistering heat, and that's about it. It was fine. Uh, we rode for eight days, seven days, rode for seven days. California to Nevada to Utah to Colorado to Kansas to Missouri. And of those seven days, uh, four days we had bad weather at some point. Uh, not all day, every day, but bad enough so that you thought, oh my God. <laughs> it's just awful. And it was. Uh, we went from Santa Cruz, California, down the California coast, right down Route 1, right by the ocean, um, for about 90 miles. And out there, when they say low shoulder, <laughs> they basically mean Ditch. 600 feet. <laughs> you know, if you go, and they, they don't have guardrails. Yeah. If you go off the edge, of Route 1 going south from Santa Cruz toward the L.A. area, if you go off the edge, they'll eventually find you, but it might take a day or so. Yeah. Um, it's like 35 miles an hour, just like this, or ever. And then we cut east, came across Southern California, uh, and then across the bottom of Utah, and then through, U uh, I'm sorry, bottom of Nevada, and all the way, all the way across Utah, and then all the way across Colorado, and then Kansas into Branson, Missouri. Hillbilly, yes. the, the Hillbilly Riviera, they call it. <laughs> Branson, Missouri. Um, and I tell you what, and, and I, don't, I don't want to preach, and I'm not going to, but if people have never been to the West or the Southwest and seen what's out there, you got to go. Mm -hmm. It is absolutely stunning. Now, those of us who live over here always see are green trees and oceans and oh, yeah. swamps, whatever. You get out there, Other side and of Mother Nature. the mountains and the oh. valleys and the red rock and the snow-capped mountains, even now, the, the hundreds of miles of roads through Colorado and Utah and, and Kansas, they're absolutely desolate. I mean, you look, you ride along and you look over both ways. And you can probably see maybe 50 miles both ways. Yeah. Not, a, not a thing. Not a house, not a barn, not a windmill, not a light pole, nothing. Absolute desolation. Did you feel like you were like in a Mad Max but you know, <laughs> But you know people have been there because you're on a road. Yeah. And every now and then there'd be a crossroad and a gas station in a 7-Eleven in the middle of nowhere. But the land out there, Utah and Colorado and... Nevada this time it's just stunning, absolutely breathtaking. You got you got to go out there. Oh yeah. And I don't care what people say about California being full of fruits and nuts and crazy people. California has got more scenery in its little self than the rest of the country combined. It's got the regular beaches down south. Yeah. It's got the rocky beaches up north. It's got the redwood forests, the sequoias. It's got Death Valley, yep. which is under sea level. It's got mountains. It's just, California is just stunning. And it, they may be wackos, but eh. it's still just gorgeous country out there. My favorite place in the world is Death Valley. I'm sorry? My favorite place in the world is Death Valley. Yeah, yeah. We went through, Death and the thing about Death Valley is, and you probably, if you've been there, you know, yeah. you, <laughs> if you're going west to east, you come over a mountain in California, and there, laid out in front of you, 
when you're on this big mountain, you're up to the mountain, you're riding left and right, all of a sudden you crest the mountain and there's Death Valley laid out in front of you for 70 miles wide and 100 miles long. And you can see the road that you're going to be on for the next three hours. Because it goes this way and that way and down the mountain and it gets to the very bottom and it goes across the valley for God knows how far. It goes up the other side and you know where you're going to be for the next three hours. Yeah. That's the road you're going to be on. And it's just it's 105 degrees, which I guess is fairly yeah. moderate <laughs> this time of year. Yeah. Not as bad as it usually is, but we had a great time. Other than the weather and, and other than um, nobody got hurt, nobody fell down, nobody crashed, nobody broke their bike. A lot of people came out and visited us at hotels and restaurants and gave money on the road for the ride, for the, for the petty camp. Um, we got to Branson, Missouri um, Friday afternoon, had a big welcoming party, a big celebration there. Uh, I took a rental car, a Greyhound bus, two trains, and my own private car to get home from Branson to Charlottesville to Newport News. So I had quite a, I had quite, <laughs> I had quite a ride. I was on everything except, and I took an airplane to get out there, of course. So other than boats, I was on I was on something, you, except a horse maybe, you know. I got there and got back home, using almost every form of transportation. Yeah, well, motorcycle's a mechanical horse yeah, anyway. Using a mechanical motorcycle that came, Kawasaki came all across country. I, I, I occasionally once, I topped 100 miles an hour. I had to, because I was I was no. The thing is, if you're at the back of the group. Or 200 of us. And when the group pulls out in the morning from a gas station or a hotel, wherever you happen to fall in line is where you are. Yeah. Because you're not supposed to really kind of go forward. And once you get out on the interstate, the front's gone. The front, hell, the front may be three miles ahead of you. Once they start accelerating, you're going Yeah, if you're yet. trying to catch up, you gotta, you got to run as fast as, faster than they are, or you'll never catch them. Mm -hmm. And it, it occasionally... Once it got to a hundred, and that was enough. I, you know, they're not going to leave me. They'll be at the next gas station. So it was a lot of fun. Hope to do it again. I want to thank you publicly for supporting me. You gave me money to help out with my ride, and I appreciate it. No problem. Um, Did you bring me an In-N-Out Burger? I'm, I went to In-N-Out Burger <laughs> in Bakersfield on Sunday night uh, in Bakersfield, California. They all ate at the hotel. I went to In-N-Out Burger. I found an In-N-Out Burger and a Barnes & Noble on the same strip, which was great for me. I needed something to read. Um, one more thing. I'm going to be at Langley Saturday night uh -huh. for the express purpose of being there to thank people, other people, who supported the ride. Right. I'll be in Charlotte tomorrow and Friday and early Saturday morning, but I'm coming back from Charlotte Saturday night to be at Langley so I can personally thank all the people at Contributed to my calls, so good deal. Right. Are you going to be up in the Al Pierce Media Center, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Smile when you say that. Oh, by the way, yes. On Friday, I, I got to California on Wednesday night. On Friday, a, a friend of mine and I rode down to Laguna Seca Raceway, uh -huh. a road course. And you'll never ever guess who I saw there. Well, you will guess. Racing a Lamborghini. Um, Brandon? Brandon Godover. Ah. Brandon, um, um, uh, his father and mother weren't there yet, uh, but they were coming in. Rick wasn't there yet, and his wife wasn't there yet. But Brandon was there in, with a factory back Lamborghini uh, sports car. So I watched him, visited him for a while, and watched him race for a while. So. And then he said he'd be at Langley this past Saturday night, the weekend I was coming back home. He was at Langley helping out, I think. He's kind of contracted out to help a couple of guys with their late model program. Okay. So he was at Langley one Saturday night. He was at Laguna Seca the previous Saturday racing sports cars. So For a second, I, I was thinking he was out there. Then I said, no, he wouldn't be here. He's got other stuff he had to do. And maybe he was out there. Yeah. 
that would be like Saturday night to or Saturday the first or second or something like that. But a week ago. Not just past Saturday night. Oh, okay, this past Saturday. The previous Saturday oh, okay. night. The weekend I first got out there, he was already out there, so I rode the bike down the twisty highway to Laguna Seca. Cool. And watched him practice and qualify and he didn't race until Saturday and Sunday, but I got to visit with him for a while. So, so that's my story and I'm sticking to it. So he gave you some good feedback on the Lamborghini racing then, huh? I know they're loud and they're pretty stiffy. They're tiny little things. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, if you're if you're a bit, you couldn't get in one. <laughs> I'm just telling you, I'm being honest. Oh, sure. I couldn't get in one. <laughs> All those drivers are like little bitty scrawny things. Mark Martin size. Mark Martin, Danica Patrick size, Indy car driver size, horse jockey size, as opposed to any other kind of jockey. Um, and, and Brandon's not a big guy, and you could tell he was struggling to get in. Yeah. Both doors work, so you got to step over the roll cage, and you got to, it's just, it's kind of weird. But he's got a pretty good deal. I have no clue how he did either Saturday or Sunday, don't know. I will ask him when I see him Saturday night. What? What was that? I was making sure you were streaming on our app. Oh, okay. We yeah. created an app since you were last here with us. <coughs> so oh that you can That's actually watch scary. it live on phones. That's pretty scary. I don't know all the app stuff. Hey, technology. This is um, what it is. The other thing was, being on a motorcycle on... Saturday, Sunday week ago, it was last Saturday night, or on the train Saturday night, I had no idea who won either Talladega or um, Kansas City until for at least 24 hours after the race. I didn't bother to look at it in the morning. I thought, eh, I'll check it tonight when I get to the hotel. Um, Junior won. Of course, Jimmy let him win. We all know that. Yeah. <laughs> And then Jimmy won, and we all know that uh, on mile and a half tracks, he's awfully good. Yep. He's awfully good. He's sneaking up now. That's his 73rd or 74th win, something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. He's sneaking up on, you know, a little it's bit different. more. Give him another year or two. He'll be top three or four. And mm -hmm. um, I don't think he'll catch Gordon. He certainly won't catch Richard or David. Mm -hmm. He may not catch Gordon. He may catch Walter, Allison, and Yarborough mm -hmm. in career wins. Depends on how long he wants to stay out there. But um, yeah, he's pretty good on mile and a half. I would not bet against him a week from Sunday either. No. How many wins has he got there? Seventy-three. Three. Three. Yeah. And this this uh, this package works for, good for him too. Oh yeah. He yeah. likes his package. And it just kills me to hear people say, well, NASCAR created this package just for him. Come uh, on, people. Geez. You're idiots. You're gonna all change idiots. That. They're going to change it, too. They're going to change it. Well, they're, they might. They're working on some new stuff. So. But to think that NASCAR created the aero package it's crazy. just to suit Jimmy Johnson yeah, it's crazy. is just about as dumb as the people who think that, that, that Jimmy let Dale Jr. win at Talladega. I know. It's crazy. You just you can't. Boy, you just can't teach those people anything. Here, here's here's something too. Your top fives for him in Sprint Cup, 200. Top tens, 300. How do you wind up getting exact numbers like that? Oh, yeah, well, <laughs> it just have, I mean, when he wins again, it'll all jump by one. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> or It may jump by one Saturday or Sunday night. You never know. There you go. Speaking of points, go to the, go to the current cup point standard, if you will. You know, you can talk. You can jump in there. <laughs> you're doing fine. I just um... uh, let's see. And nobody had asked me, but I think it's right that NASCAR lets Kyle Busch in the chase if he wins. Yeah. Because um, as they told us not long ago, the wreck is on us. The fact that he missed races is, uh -huh. on, is on us. All right. Um, okay, this is not really. This is not really the the chase standings. This it's is not the chase standings. This is real point standing. 
Yeah, it's not the chase standing zone. Mm -hmm. Because Truex doesn't have a win, so he wouldn't be second ahead of Johnson or Logano or Junior or Keselowski or Kenseth. Rick Murray wouldn't be ahead of, scroll up a little bit. All those guys wouldn't be ahead of uh, Kurt Busch yeah. or, or Danny, Danny Hamlin. Hamlin. So, okay, that's good. But yeah. what they'll do is they'll seed them by wins yeah. and, and then they'll put, then they'll start taking people without wins based on points. Um, and it'll, it'll change pretty dramatically. Truex will be the highest seed without a win if yeah. it continues that way. Yeah, that, that, surprisingly, they don't have the, the chase one. It just has the driver, owner, manufacturer. Yeah. Well, yeah, wait, wait, go back. You had said chase grid. Chase grid, okay. Excuse me. See what that says. Chase grid. Okay, there you go. Yeah. That's based on wins. All uh, right, uh, yeah, Johnson, Harvick. Wins and points. Logano Jr., Kozlowski, Kenseth, uh, Kurt Busch. Is that Hamlin? Yeah. And then Truex is the leader among those. That's no wins. That doesn't have a win, right. Then Jamie McMurray, Jeff Gordon, Casey yeah. Kane, Eric. So scroll McMurray. down a little bit further. See how far down it goes. Newman. It doesn't go any further. Okay. Boyer. Yeah. Yeah. The Boyer. Yeah. And no Danica. Oh, wow. Because yeah. they kept saying, ooh, she's right on the cusp of being oh, chase eligible. Unbelievable. There we go. So I can do it side by side. Okay. Danica is... Yeah, she's 18th or 17th, 17th in, points, in points. in points. But points really don't mean a thing when you come to chase grid. Mm -hmm. Now, you know what's sad is all she's got to do is... Well, a lot of things are sad. If, if, she gains, a, if she gains three points, she'll actually wind up on the chase grid. If she what? If she gets three points more than Clint Boyer, she's going to replace him on the chase grid. Um. Because Clint Boyer's number sixteen. Right. Yeah. Right now. And yeah. only this two Scroll down. Who, who's below her? Uh, Carl. Okay. And yeah, no, nobody below. Nobody below Denny has a has a, a win. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. Because she's sitting right there in 17th spot, so Clint is sitting 16th mm -hmm. on the chase grid, so scary. Well, if they can get her into chase, by God, they'll do it. <laughs> oh, yeah, you can count on it. They go, count so, on they, it. so you think NASCAR is going to change the cars for her now instead of Jimmy? <laughs> I wonder how they're going to keep her out of the All-Star race Saturday night. I guess the fan vote, they get her by fan vote, if they need to. Oh, you know, she's been running decently, uh, better. I don't want to say decent. She's been running better. She had a terrible bad, day. It's, it's too bad they don't have an ongoing vote amount as to who's... Well, then that way they couldn't jiggle it if they had to. Yeah. Well, somebody knows. Hmm? Somebody has to know. Oh, I'm sure somebody... 1801 West Independence Speedway Boulevard <laughs> just probably knows exactly what's going on. But you know, it could be completely legal. Because I know that when I was, the first time I was a Hall of Fame voter, three years ago, I went in there expecting to get the heavy hand, okay, these are the guys we really, really like. Now vote for whoever you want, but these are the guys we really, really, not a, not a thing. It was, as far as I was concerned, it was absolutely, totally, above board, honest, straight. Not a thing was wrong with it. But that was just me. I don't know what might have happened to the other 20, 21 voters or 19, whatever. All right, I've talked enough. Who else we got? Well, Joey is trying to say, I don't know if the lights were flashing, we never answered. No, nothing's flashing. <laughs> Okay. 
This is your basic dead air. Just so like keep that. talking, Al. You're doing great. Oh. <laughs> keep it moving, baby. Why don't you come over here and sit down and start Oh, uh, no. I'll, I'll be in the background. <clears throat> I'll be in the cheap seats. You know, the more I talk, the more I eat. <laughs> keep that in mind. Roger's oh. got, he's got coupons. Hey, Joey. Hey. So, uh, you can't get through one way. We'll call you instead. <laughs> hey, there you go. Perfect. Anywho, we got Joey Gatina. Is it Gatina? It's Gatina, yeah. Uh, Italian, so the G is kind of like a J. Aha. Uh -huh. All right. You got Al Pierce and Jerry Rossler in here with me as well. I need more volume. Well, Can I need just a tiny bit more volume? Volume. Okay. Let's probably go do it. You know, it's awful quiet. You still, still there? there? I'm here, yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> now I can hear. Joey, go ahead and give us a little bio about yourself. Well, I just, uh, I, you know, uh, a guy trying to make it in a, a risk-free sport like a lot of guys. Uh, just kind of, uh, last couple of years, uh, decided to try to make one more swing at it. I'm now 36 years old. And, um... I've been working for Dell here at the Racing Adventure for uh, about the last nine years. Uh, prior to that, was with another racing school. So, you know, all my uh, on-track experience was around Talladega, Charlotte, Bristol, uh, you name it. Um, so we kind of got to a point where, you know, local racing just wasn't that attractive anymore. And I got up and said, you know, I'd love to try to, you know, race Talladega, you know, in, in a professional race at least once in my life. And um, we were able to do some stuff at our local newsletter here in Pelham, Alabama. <clears throat> from there, I went to a guy that worked for Peterson Motorsports on the crew. And uh, a couple weeks later, they sent me a message and, and asked me if I wanted to drive a race car. So it was kind of a shocker. Uh, initially, set up just to a test down in Daytona. So we wound up doing the Mobile race last year. And then uh, we ran Talladega. And, um, you know, the driver was a lot better than the cars. <laughs> But, uh, you know, you have to start somewhere. And the Peterson guys, we ran their third car. Uh, great group of guys. Uh, wouldn't be here today without them, honestly. And, um, you know, we have some stuff lined up for Daytona this year. We're really excited about that. Things, you know, it's a business first in uh, racing and have some things fall through there. And um, we were all set to run Talladega uh, a couple weeks ago, and that kind of went by the wayside uh, the day before the race. So uh, what we decided to do through some of the, you know, uh, I guess you'd say the the negatives with the, the different things happening with Rise and Arca, uh, they're making some rule changes next year, the body, the motor, and stuff like that. And uh, basically the, the big thing for us is, you know, it's time to, you know, if we're going to continue to raise money and, and put our sponsors in a good position, it's time to look at the truck theory. So, um Right now, uh, we got everything submitted to NASCAR, and uh, next step, uh, Mr. Bedon is going to be called next Wednesday. And then we're going to select a short track to run uh, this season, and possibly more. Uh, just depends on what kind of deals will work out. But we know for sure we'll run one short track this year, and uh, then we'll see what Mr. Bodine lets us do after that for next season on the Speedway. Uh, we already have uh, financial backing for the 2016 Chuck Series race in Talladega, so. Really excited about that, but like I said, even more exciting is the opportunity to run some NASCAR stuff. Now, did I understand you say you're 36 years old or 26? I'm 36. Okay. I feel like I'm 26. Okay, well that's good. That's, that's better than that than the other way around. Um, you must know that you've, you've got a, quite a challenge ahead of you. Oh yeah, I do, and uh, but I think you know, uh, you know, the biggest thing this sport was built on was uh, guys that uh, the fans, I guess you say, filled those stadiums and up because they respected those people down in the garage area. They could relate to those guys. I think that's where you're having a big disconnect today. Is you don't have that sport uh, to be a race car driver today. It's not really about anything to do with your ability. Uh, granted, there's some people uh, that's got the opportunity that's done very well with it, and that's great. And there are some out there that haven't done much with it, but they're a race car driver. Um, in my situation, it's a double negative because, uh, you know, we don't have the, 
the million dollars behind us, and he's got the age in there. But again, the sport was funded on blue collar, hard working guys, and that's exactly what I am. Um, and I'm excited to be in that position to show other guys that th there is a chance, there's an opportunity, and you just have to find your path. And, and th that path for me is not really scary uh, because, again, there's a lot of people who thought I'd never even make it to the Arca Series on one race. Um, and now we're sitting here with some opportunities just to truck racing. So you've got to stay positive no matter how bad it gets. Uh, Buddy Baker told me a long time ago, he said, Joey, there's more negatives in racing than you'll ever have positive. You can outweigh the, the negatives, and you'll make it in the sport. Well, you know, that was, I was way young then. I thought I was going to be a cup driver by now. But um, like I said, today I'm super excited, super blessed for the opportunities. Uh, getting to come on you guys' show. I mean, that's, that's another blessing in itself. But um, I'm really excited. And like I said, the challenges are there, the challenges are anything in life. But uh, I think we can overcome some of those things. Well, let me, let me just give you one piece of advice if somebody who's been around this stuff a long time. Harry Gant was almost 40 years old before he ran his first full cup season. Now, he had done a lot of late model racing, a lot of sports and racing, but Harry Gant was almost 40 before he got his first good ride. So you still got, you know, using that basis as a criteria, you still got about four years to go before you get your good, your first great ride. But if it, with any kind of luck, it'll come earlier. But think about that. You know, Harry Gant had a pretty good career. And Harry Gant's pretty highly thought of. And he did not get started really until he was older than you are. So there you go. Yeah, absolutely. You know, that's something with the Dell Generation Adventure. I, I asked the guys who were out this one weekend. And uh, I said, how old was Dale Jarrett when he won his first NASCAR or Winston Cup race? And uh, nobody knew. Dale was 35 years old. Uh, so, you know, age is, uh, I think money outweighs the age today. Obviously, you could be 95 and you had 30 million bucks. Uh, Rick Hendricks going to find a way to get your money and put you in a race car. So that's what it really all comes down to, uh, is that, really. Uh, but I'm excited. And I think, you know, in, in my situation, it, had I had the opportunity at a younger age, I don't know that I've ever really got, you know, would have been able to uh, take it all in. And, and now, I guess, with my age, and as far as I've had to work, it just means that much more to me. Um, as a matter of fact, I, I was telling people at Caledonia, you know, the last five laps, you know, to accomplish that dream and that goal, I literally cried the last five laps. It meant that much to me. So I, I love this sport. I've always been a race fan. And, uh, you know, getting the chance to continue to live my dreams, I hope everybody out there, uh, no matter how crazy they may be, if you want to be president or, or whatever you want to be, uh, you do that because you get one opportunity in life, and if you don't make the most of it, what are you doing with it? And, and that's what we're doing. I'm, I'm going to live every day to the fullest. And, uh, you know, right now I can say I've accomplished uh, a pretty good bit uh, in my life, and I'm really, really happy. Well, you know, in my opinion, age is just a number. Doesn't matter what age you are. If you want to do it, go for it. Absolutely, thank you. Yeah, well, your plans, uh, you mentioned some things are maybe in the process of being done. Um, I know Brett Bodine pretty well, known him a long time. He is a, an eminently fair, reasonable um, evaluator of talent. Um, have you talked to him about what you need to do specifically to get qualified for a, for a high-speed cup track? Or have you talked to him in generalities? Or what, what do you think you have to do to earn the spot you're looking for? Well, right now I've got to seek uh, counsel to a good friend of mine, Scott Stimble, who runs the truck series, and Scott's been kind of answering the questions and stuff. Today we actually filed the paperwork with NASCAR and uh, did receive confirmation that they got it. They didn't kick out yet, and uh, that Brad would be calling me next Wednesday. So we'll, you know, next Wednesday we'll sit down and, and get all that kind of laid out, and and I'll be talk about my background and things like that, what we've done in racing and stuff. So. Um, that's the conversation I'm really looking forward to uh, having uh, with Brett to kind of understand what we got to do, and that's what we want to use this year for, is to kind of get those things done. Um, we know, first off, rather about we're going to run a racetrack that's a mile and under. Um, and there's multiple things we're kind of talking to right now. 
just kind of a new point until we talk to Brad, get all that finalized, and then hopefully I would think in the next a couple weeks we can actually say we're going to be racing for a, a truck team and um, right now the track that I'd really love to do is Phoenix. Uh, I've got a bunch of laps out there and uh, it's out in November. Uh, if, if the situation occurs that we come out and have to run one a track one mile and under and then we're good for next season, then that's the track we'll choose. If we've got to run multiple, then obviously we'll choose a track sooner. Uh, something very wide that we can't tear anything up and stab everybody's leg like not Bristol. Um, somewhere like New Hampshire or something like that. I've got a bunch of laps at Gateway, so that would be kind of neat to go up there again. But uh, like I said, it all, it all depends on what Brad asks us to do, and that's what we'll do to, to get it done this season. Do you happen to know a guy named Rick Crawford? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, Rick, Rick, huh? yeah, Rick, Rick and I are sort of buddies. We've done some things together. Uh, you can't find a better person to give you the straight scoop advice than Rick Crawford. Uh, if you can ever get yourself to where, not so much take you under his wing, but at least sit down with you over a burger and fries and a Diet Coke somewhere and talk to you for a couple of hours about what it takes, he, he will be as good a guy to talk to as anybody in Alabama, believe me. Absolutely, and, and you know, it's funny you bring that name up. Uh... I actually, uh, I've kind of got a connection with Mr. Crawford, and uh, I'm going to Mobile next week, and that's the plan to try to uh, to sit down with him. Uh, I got to meet Rick for the first time when we raced Mobile, and uh, he was actually crew chief, and I want to say for the 46 car. Uh, I think it was married to fall, I guess it was, and uh, out of everybody there, Frank Kimmel and all those guys, of course, you know, Star Trek, seeing some of those guys, it's really cool. Uh, I'll always be a race fan. I'm going to be a race fan first, and... Uh, the day those guys are on our cool team, you know, I, I don't know. But uh, anyway, Mr. Crawford's the only one I grabbed. And I said, hey, I, you know, I just want to meet you, shake your hand. And we got about five or ten minutes to talk, and it was awesome. But, yeah, this this whole situation now, uh, to have someone like him to fall back on, and then to kind of, just like you said, more importantly, lead you in the right direction. And that's something I've not had. And, and we're trying to build a, a stronger unit, uh, I guess, a, a marketing team and more people with the same goals that I've got, and vision that I've got of how we can make this happen. Because uh, that's all it is, it's a strategy. Uh, a race car driver today, in my situation, uh, you're a politician first. A uh, race car driver comes down the road. You've got to go out there and sell yourself to the general public, to your sponsors, to everybody else. And then race car driver comes later. So I think we've got that politician part knocked down pretty good. If, if you get a chance, if you can remember this, if you can't remember, just write it down in a little piece of paper. Ask Rick about the aircraft carrier ride. Okay. Say, say, hey, Rick, tell me about your aircraft carrier ride, and and he will expound. He will he will go off for quite a while about that, and that'll kind of get him in a position where he knows you've talked to somebody who knows him, who was with him on the aircraft carrier ride, and it might loosen him up a little bit. He he might tell you some secrets because. I have seen him on an aircraft carrier, and uh, it was we had a lot of fun, and he'll be glad to tell you all about it. I'll be glad to hear it as well. Yeah, it's a good story. Also, if you ever have an opportunity to talk to my good friend Eli Gold, uh, you know, the voice of Alabama football and the voice of NASCAR, Eli Gold, Eli Gold would be a great guy to talk to from a marketing, media, promotion, how to address people, uh, how to talk to the media. Uh, Eli could give you some great advice on that aspect of your career. So um, tell him you talked to a guy in Hampton, Virginia, who suggested you talk to him about that part of racing, and he'll say, oh, I know exactly who you talked to, because he'll know. <laughs> Yeah, I eat at Eli's restaurant. It's actually uh, right around the corner from here uh, quite often. I've actually got a picture of my uh, my card from Caladay and, and my autograph or my name on the postcard it's got the Crimson Tide A on there. And I think that's what got me in the restaurant, not the whole race card part, but the Alabama A. But, um, yeah, that's uh, that's a great name right there. Um, and that would be an absolute honor to, to get a chance to hang around him. I, I took Eli Gold to his first NASCAR race. He rode with me from Virginia to Daytona Beach for his audition on MRN. So Eli and I go back um, close to 30 years. So 
tell, tell him the guy in Hampton, Virginia said, I need some advice about how to have, handle the media. He'll, he, he'll be glad to help you out. Yeah, and you know, too, you know, right now in Birmingham, Alabama, uh, we used to pride ourselves on being, having some race car drivers down here. We had the Birmingham International Raceway, you've heard the Alabama game. And racing is just kind of falling off the map down here. And uh, right now, as far as uh, any type higher level situation, we got Granny Singer and you got some of the guys down south. Uh, but up here in my area, there's nobody else really that we're contending with as far as uh, well, sharing the spotlight or time with the media and stuff like that. So that's where I really feel like we've really got to start stepping up and taking more advantage of that situation uh, and getting out there a little bit more. And somebody like Eli Gold would just be amazing to have, uh, you know, to kind of help direct us in that area as well. So I definitely, I've got his office number on my other phone. I'm going to call and leave him a message as soon as we get off the phone and see, uh, see if I get a call back. <laughs> All right, Joey, we're going to go ahead and get out of here. We've got our next guest already waiting in the background here. Let's go ahead and uh, let you do a shout-out to any sponsors or people you want to thank. Yeah, uh, to Kenworth Truck Works, or Truck Works Kenworth in Birmingham. they got nine dealerships, uh, two in Mississippi. Um, those guys have been my saviors. Uh, they stood beside me. Uh, without those guys, we wouldn't be here today racing. Um, other than that, right now, it's kind of all we want to talk about on the sponsorship side. But also, I know you've got Joey Gates coming on later today. I want to say hell of a job out there at Talladega. Obviously, Smut means, Jimmy means, big name here in Alabama. We were all, it was awesome to see that 52 car up front. But thank y'all for having me on. Y'all have a great night. All right. Thank you. Thank you, too. Oh. How you doing tonight, Josh? All pretty good, buddy. How about yourself? We're hanging in there. Sorry to have you on for so long waiting. <laughs> oh, you're alright. But then you get to listen to the show without having to actually watch it. <laughs> so look at that. Which is always a, a good thing. Might want to turn up volume on him too. He sounds a little low. Alright, is that better? Are you still there? I'm still here. Oh, good. We can hear you now. They were trying to adjust your volume on the speakerphone. Perfect. There you go. Uh, go ahead and give a quick bio about yourself and tell them uh, you know, a little bit where you got started racing and let the people out there find out something about you and, and what you're hoping to do later on. Um, just, you know, started driving uh, custom go-karts that my dad built me when I was two and a half and uh, eventually started racing at four in go-karts, ran quarter midgets, San Aleros, Legends, Pro Trucks, Super Light Models on the Arctic series now. Um, you know, the ultimate goal of the driver is to always make it, you know, into the Cup Series. Um, so that's where we're headed. Yeah, where, where are you from? Where, where do you race out of? Um, I'm originally from Port Charlotte, Florida, but I live in Concord, North Carolina now. That's where our shop is. Okay, originally from what part of Florida? Port Charlotte. Oh, okay, okay. About an hour south of Tampa. Yeah, I know about where it is. Yes, sir. Now, did you? I was trying to remember what I read on you. Do you do some spotting for some of the drivers? Um, every now and again I do. Um, just depends. Somebody needs some help for stuff like that. It's track. They'll come up to me and I'll spot for them on occasion. Okay. Now, um, now you're running in the ARCA series now, correct? Yes. You, and you've got yourself set up for a full ride so far, or? Uh, we're still working on it. We're trying to put the pieces together. Uh, we're uh, we're definitely going to run the next couple races, I think the next two or three, and then go from there. And you know, the, the sport's all about funding, and, and we're not going to give up, that's for sure. Okay. Because um, I noticed that you, you were spotted for Penske and, and Wood Brothers, and also... M A K K E Motorsports. Is this no, like? Huh? Well, there's, a, there's another guy. That's not me. That's not you. Oh goodness! I'm, I'm sitting here reading two different things then. <laughs> well, where's your well, next? Me and this, me, yeah, we're good friends. <laughs> <laughs> now, where's your next race? When 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 do you go again? We go to Ohio. We race this Sunday. Where is it? You said Salem? Toledo, Ohio. Oh, oh, okay. Yep. Now that's what, okay. 
Now, you got the list of questions over there. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, get going on it. All right, if you, um, let me see, what's a good one? All right. What what do you what, what's your best race related movie yeah. that you that you like to watch other than Talladega Nights? <laughs> I don't consider that a race related. I know. <laughs> Just the name, right? Yeah, that's it. That's it for sure. So what what would you uh, think would be the best race related movie that you like? I mean, Days of Thunder, of course. Oh, Lance, yes, I've forgotten all about that. It's a race movie. Yeah. That's the best. It is. Great movie. All right. Here, here's a good one for you. If you, if they allowed you to listen to music while you were racing, what type of music would you listen to? Um, I don't think it would matter, really. I mean, I, I kind of sometimes don't hear anything. I mean, I'll listen to music when I'm racing, but I don't really listen to music when I'm racing. Well, that's what I mean. I don't really listen to music when I'm racing. I mean, something to, re to relax you or something to, to give you, like, the charge of the light brigade type stuff. Yeah, you definitely have to have something. You know, keep you keep you going, keep you upbeat and alert for sure. Well, who is your most inspiring racer? Um, you know, back in the day, of course, Dale Earnhardt. You know, to I followed as a kid and you know watched and wanted to be like as a driver. You know, if I could ever make it into this Cup Series and higher level. Um, you know, he was kind of like the old school. You know, he stayed old school. Yeah. He wasn't. He wasn't all about showing up with your helmet and flying on your jet back to the house. You know, he. Was, <laughs> That's right. He was a down to earth driver for sure. He was a good guy. I think everybody liked him. Even people who were not his fans liked him. And you had to like. You had to like the guy. He was too good. That's guy. the best way to have it for sure. Yes. Now what? Um, what gives you motivation to go race and win? What's that? What do you feel gives you your motivation to race and to win? Um, you know, we've always been a, a racing family, you know, ever since before I was born. You know, my dad started racing in Indiana and, and it's just something we love and it's, it's more of a, it's more of a lifestyle. Than a, than a hobby or, or a job, you know, it's, it's a way of life for us, and that's what keeps us going every week. Now, what part of the country you say you're uh, out of, Josh? You live in Concord. Concord. Oh, you live yeah. down in Concord? Concord, no. So where you, where you feel is your best place to go get a good meal at the Concord area? Um, it just depends on what you want, I guess. What are you, what are you in the mood for? <laughs> Al, that's your part of the country. You would know. Well, I, just, I go to the Harrisburg, Harrisburg Family Diner. Right across the street. There you go. It's a good place. Not far from the Speedway. I live about 15 minutes from there. Now, how much, how much short track racing do you do in, in that part of the Carolinas? Um, I do a little bit. Not much. Um, you know, we're on the road most of the time during the season, so we don't really get opportunity to race your clothes, but uh, when I do, you know, we'll run some Legends car stuff or some late model stuff, maybe Hickory or Charlotte Motor Speedway for the summer shootout and things like that. Okay. So you're still, you're also still looking for your first win in the ARCA series then, right? Yes, sir. And you got some top fives. You get, if you get enough top fives and top tens, eventually, well, he got second. You led a bunch of laps, so you you know you know. We well, got second in Kansas yeah. last year. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's close for sure. I mean, we we've been really close. We've had some really good runs. And it's, it's been in contention for the win, and you know, either just come up a little short or circumstances didn't fall our way. But um, we're definitely going to get one this year. And I think once the first one, once we get the first one out of the way, and I think we'll go ahead and rack up a couple more for the end of the season. So. Good deal. Well, so far you take the record. I think I don't think we've ever had anybody started racing under age five, and you you kind of break the record. So right now, you are our youngest guest through the years to have started at at before elementary school, I guess. So hey, oh yeah, hang in there. Like I like I said when when he uh, when, when Dad built that car for me when I was doing 
two and a half. I mean, I, I didn't know what was going on, but, you know, he would sit on the side of it and, you know, he would teach me what to do and he would basically drive for me, but, you know, as I got, I probably paid three, three and a half, you know, he was just, I was on my own from there. And I just, I've always drove something with, with a motor and four tires. Okay. As I was born. <laughs> All right, well, listen, before we let you go, why don't you tell us, uh, name as many sponsors as you'd like to, thank as many people as you'd like to, kind of give everybody a little, a little um, going away gift for yourself. All right, for sure. You know, that's definitely, definitely uh, some of my main people, you know, Go Pub, Sundog Eyewear, uh, Race and Nation, and, uh, Team on your tail. She's not quite a sponsor, but uh, she's on our car from week in and week out. Uh, little girl is diagnosed with leukemia, and we try to help and support her from week in and week out as much as we can. My family, of course, you know, we, we're, uh, we're a racing family, and they stick behind me, and, and uh, we're, in, we're in it to the end. All right, well, we'll go ahead and let you get out of here, and we'll catch you next time around, okay? All right, talk to you later. Thank you. Good night. What in the world? Who's calling now? Is that you, Joey? Oh. <laughs> you must not have got my text. Oh, it was the same one. Alright, anyway, it's 757-806-7223. We can call the other number now. We finally got him off the line. <laughs> Alright, Jay. Bye-bye. <laughs> oh. Anyway, that was Joey Gacy. He will be calling back in again. Alright, you can jump in there and introduce him. And... <sighs> anyway. He said he started when he was four years old. Go ahead and push the button. Hey Joey, how's it going? Good, how about yourself? We got you in here finally. <laughs> yeah. All right, you're having me on. Yeah, we have Joey Gates on the line with us, uh, running in the Sprint Cup and the Xfinity Series. Uh, go ahead and give a little brief bio so the people that uh, haven't heard from you or haven't heard of you get to learn a little bit about you. Oh, um, well, I drive the Donate Life car in the NASCAR Spring Cup Series in the 32 car, and I drive the Donate Life car also in the NASCAR Xfinity Series. Now, would you, uh, when you got into racing, what did you start at? <laughs> uh, I started racing go karts at uh, 8 years old, and then uh, when I was 14 years old, I started racing cars, and I've been working my way up ever since. Okay. And how old are you now? Uh, 22. Oh. Just a baby. Plenty of time. <laughs> yeah, still, still lots of years yeah. ahead of him. Yeah, that's, that's the plan at least. Hey, you got, I noticed the other day you had something going on for Iowa uh, in the Xfinity race. Something about honoring people. How did all that stuff work out? Uh, it's been working pretty good. Uh, we, we have a lot of people we have not their names and pictures on the car, so uh, we're looking forward to uh, being on the show those here on Saturday when we take pictures of it, and uh, everyone can look at that on our Facebook page, uh, Joey Gates Racing. Cool. Now, uh, you're scheduled for the full year on both the, uh, series? Sorry, what was that? Sound like you're all out in a wind blowing you all over the place. I said, are you got a full ride for both series this year? Series so far this year, I have two starts, but uh, hopefully I have some more soon. Yeah, <clears throat> Joy, we a lot of us who have not been to Iowa have heard people rave about it. They love the place. Tell us what what it is about Iowa Speedway that that everybody seems to like. Um, I think it's, there's a lot of stuff. The, the fans are great out there. They're really passionate. Uh, have racing and promotes 
really good. It's it's not it's it's pretty much a short track, but uh, it still has some bigger things it puts into also still like arrow and stuff like that. But uh, really both corners, but especially one and two, it's it's really hard to figure out how to get through there. You have to have a really big arc, but uh, then there's there's a really big bump in the middle of one and two. You have to figure out how to hit that just right, and it's really challenging for all the drivers. But uh, it's you can race from the bottom or one group up, and I just promote really good racing. Is is it like? I mean, can it be compared to any other track? Uh, most of us are familiar uh -huh. with the other other cup and Xfinity tracks. Is it like anything else? I would say the closest thing is. It's two is Richmond. Um, Rusty Wallace helped design Iowa Speedway, and one of his favorite tracks was Richmond. Yeah. So uh, he tried to copy that a little bit, but uh, <clears throat> the track's just a little bit bigger. Iowa is a seven eighths, and Richmond is a three quarters. And uh, there's more, uh, there's more, just progressive banking at, at Iowa, which helps helps the racing side by side a little bit more than uh, what Richmond has. I understand they get pretty good crowds out there. It's a, it's a fairly NASCAR uh, friendly area of the country. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, Iowa is very NASCAR friendly. Uh, a lot of people love racing out here and dirt racing. And we're the dirt capital of the world really out in Iowa. But uh, yeah, I mean, everyone loves NASCAR, loves NASCAR out here. And uh, hopefully someday we'll also get a cup race out here. Well, who do you feel is the most underrated um, NASCAR driver? Who's my favorite NASCAR driver? Well, you can tell me that too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, my favorite NASCAR driver uh, growing up was uh, Rusty Wallace, Rusty. Uh, Kenny Trader. Uh, Kenny, he, uh, he would come race at my local track at Hawkeye Down, and uh, he's the first NASCAR driver I ever met, and I got his autograph, and he was super nice guy and I love how he he just wants to race every night of the week if he can and I love that about him. That's cool. Now her original question was who do you feel is uh, one of the drivers that actually gets underrated? One that, sorry you guys are breaking up really bad on my phone for some reason. Um, I heard it was the drivers that are under, underrated. Um, in the Cup Series I think uh, or in the Xfinity series, I think Chris Buescher, I think he's going to be a really good driver someday, uh, watching him and everything he's been able to do and stuff like that. I mean, he's in top equipment, but uh, you can see Roush has been struggling a little bit compared to a lot of other top teams. But uh, I think he's going to be a really good driver. Good deal. Now, next weekend, when the Xfinity and the Cup are both at Charlotte, not this weekend, but next, Will you be in both races, or one or the other, or just what? Uh, I'll be in the Xfinity Series race. Okay. Um, right now, I will not be in the 600 as of right now. Do you, do you have any idea when your next cup race will be? I don't know for sure. Uh, it's kind of a week-by-week -week thing right now. Um, the ones that I have been able to do, especially Kansas, it was kind of a last-minute thing. But uh, hopefully we'll have some more here soon. Cool. By the way, um, Joey Gatina, you know him? Who? Joey Gatina. Uh, I don't know who that is for sure. What did he, he, he had said to say something to you when we got to you. We're, the, we're bad. Uh, <laughs> I know, he did, he's the top. Yeah, he said, he, apparently he knows you. <laughs> uh, he, he'd said us to to tell you to say hi from him and, and I forget what the rest of it was. Now I'm going to be really okay. sad that I didn't remember that. Joey, the age-old question that everybody always asks full-time Xfinity guys, particularly younger guys like yourself, do you enjoy having cup drivers in the same race with you? Now there won't be many this weekend I don't suspect, but generally speaking, is it okay with you to have Logano and Kane and Harvick and and Bush when he's healthy and people like that in, in, in the cup race, I mean in the Xfinity race, 
You like that idea? Um, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I think it's good to a point, but uh, I don't think they should be able to run as many races as they do. Um, I think if you're a cup driver going for a cup point, you should only be able to do five or ten Xfinity races, I think, a year. And same with trucks. Um, it's good to be able to race against them and learn what they do and stuff like that. But at the same time, I kind of feel like it uh, takes away opportunities from us maybe a little bit on uh, them uh, being able to be on the top team and having a top sponsor and stuff like that. But people always say that if a, if, a, if a young Xfinity driver runs well and holds his own and maybe beats a cup guy or two in an Xfinity race, that's a pretty good recommendation to, to cup team owners. Do you remember a moment or two when you have learned things from a cup driver in, in, in an Xfinity race? Have you ever finished the race and thought, you know, I'm better now than I was before? because I learned from so-and-so. Has that ever happened to you? Uh, I mean, a little bit, just seeing how they, uh, how they maybe our corner or how they go to uh, the top lane right away and stuff like that, that helps us. Or being able to ask them for advice, maybe, or they'll come up to us, that always helps us also. And just, <clears throat> the biggest thing is to just seeing how aggressive they are on new tires and on restarts and stuff like that. It's, it's pretty amazing when I first started in the series. Is, is is there a particular cup driver that you like to emulate or follow or, or pattern yourself after? If, if a certain guy's in an Xfinity race and you're in there with him, do you kind of like to run beside or behind somebody and learn from them, or do you just learn from whoever's out there? Uh, I guess you just learn from whoever's out there. I mean, my ultimate goal is to beat them each and every week and stuff like that. But I guess if there's a driver out there right now, I guess my career path takes a little bit of a similar path would be uh, Brad Kozlowski. He, he started out on a low-budget team and top high of a top team owner and stuff like that, and he got the chance, and he was able to show me you can do it in the top equipment. So uh, I hope someday I'll be able to do the same. Okay. Well, why don't you tell us, uh, uh, tell us who your sponsors are, Thank your crew chief and your owner. Give everybody a, a plug as, as you go out of here, and uh, good luck in Iowa this weekend. Okay. Well, uh, I just got to thank uh, Donate Life, uh, Agri Supply, DB Sales, uh, Tri State Power, and uh, just Jimmy and Archie from uh, Jimmy Means Racing and Go Green Racing, and all those guys for giving me all the opportunities, opportunities they do each and every week. Well, and another thing too, I meant to tell you was uh, the ticket package that y'all helped donate at Richmond. Uh, once again, the people that got those, they wanted to thank you for that, and uh, me and my group that got to go in there and spend some time with you guys as well. Well, I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad you guys enjoyed that. So uh, hopefully, hopefully we can see you guys again sometime. No problem. If you're out there racing, I guarantee you will. <laughs> Well, deal. All right, have have fun in Iowa. Be careful. Good luck, and we'll be watching. Okay, thanks, guys. Good night. Right, good night. Good night. It's a little All more right. quieter than it usually was, huh? But hey. intimidated by your presence, I'm sure. Oh, I thought it was yours. <laughs> Is all the vacuum cleaner sucking up gone yet? Nah. <laughs> But right. anywho, now, I'll I'd, not be here next week. I'll be at the Hall of Fame. You'll be at the Hall of Fame doing your voting. Yeah. No, I will. Yeah, but the announcement's at six o'clock, so you'll know it before you go on the air. Um, if the price is right, I might call in <laughs> and tell you what I think of the five. All right. We'll By the way, I think the five are going to be Jerry Cook, Jerry Cook, Benny Parsons, Benny, Robert Yates, either Mark Martin or Ray Abraham, but not both. And Curtis Turner. Curtis Turner. So I'm giving you five candidates for why, six Why spots. Abraham so early? Is this, why, his first, is this first time in? I mean, first time being offered Dale up? Dale Jarrett was the first timer. 
Bill Elliott was a first timer. Yeah. There are a lot of first timers. I'm surprised Mark Martin had them. Uh, Either Mark, I don't think now. I don't think they'll take Mark and, and Ray both first time. Uh huh. One will have to wait till next year. I think Jerry Cook, God Almighty, he's been lobbying. He's been <laughs> selling himself for seven years, six years, which is fine. Who, hey, Jerry Cook? Who are you going to be lobbying for? I can't say that. I, mean, I can't. Well, obviously, we won't tell anybody. I, believe me, <laughs> believe me, I know that. Uh, <laughs> Curtis Turner being the only Virginian in the group, I'd like to see him get in. Um, Benny, maybe as much for his off-track contributions as his own track. Uh -huh. um, you know, Jerry Cook was a great champion, modified champion, NASCAR official. Um, I think Robert Yates, you know, championship owner, championship engine builder, and... You know, Abraham won all his championships, but Jeff kind of yeah. changed the way the, the crew chief stuff is done. Or Mark Martin, I don't know. Bruton Smith is an, out, is an outside shot. Because Bruton may not be with us next year. They might want to get him in while he still knows he's in. Yeah. Which, quite frankly, is kind of why Fred Lorenzen went in this year. Because Fred, bad health. Yeah. I think they wanted to get him in while he knew he was in. Yeah. Anyway. So. That's it. You got two in and out burger stops over the, when you just drive. One. Oh, just, just one. one? I thought you had the second one, too. No. Do they have them out in Iowa, Terry? No. no. They're not burgers? No. You, don't, you can't get them okay. east of. They got tenderloin sandwiches in east Iowa. East of Tucson, yeah. and there's one in Dallas. Well, maybe more than one in Dallas, but east of Tucson is kind of the yeah. cutting point. They don't even get to the Mississippi. Jeez. Anywho. All right. I know, the I know the Chinese place across the street's open, though. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, geez. Well, if he could drag me out here and oh, mess no. up my Wednesday night, oh, no. make him feed me. Oh, no. oh, I don't ever have a problem with that. You know that. Uh, anything else you want to throw out there? Nope. Who do you think's going to win this weekend's race? Oh, the All-Star race? Oh, I have no clue. I mean, I really don't. It's far diff more difficult to handicap the all-star race than it is the 600. Mm -hmm. You figure it's a checkers of record situation? It's happened before. You know. well, well, we'll catch everybody. I, I, don't, I don't believe they can rig it so that Kurt, uh, Kyle Busch wins, but I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> they could, I know. Mm -hmm. Are we starting to sound like WWF or something? No, 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 no. I, I should have said that. I do know this. I know a NASCAR official who told me one day that NASCAR cannot rig a race, but it can control a race. Uh, it still falls really gray line area. Well, you know, speeding penalties on pit road, debris cautions. <laughs> I don't know. Who would have debris cautions? Jeez. You know, they've had more penalties so far this year. With the computer they system? all of last year combined. Oh, I, I, I tell you what, I remember at some of the races, if the guys were down a couple of laps or something like that and they came in for a pit stop and, and somebody would screw up something and say, for instance, run over to air hose or they, I'd sit there, one official would start to say something to him, he'd just give him the hand wave off thing, you know, don't worry about it and just let it keep on getting it. Now with the computers, they're sort of screwed. They have to do something now. Okay, let's get away with it. All right, catch everybody next week. All right, talk racing. See ya.